My name is Dylan Long. I am a board member with Dinette Care, um, which is Dinette Citizens Against Ruining Our Environment from Northwest New Mexico. I think the topics at this learning circle have been probably the most important ones so far in talking about um, organizational capacity and building upon uh, board membership uh, participation. So Don Alberto was able to share and uh, thoroughly you know the uh, process of board development and so what it takes for uh, a good board and what that good board looks like and to understand uh, the growing pains that they endured so some of those growing pains wouldn't have to be inflicted on us. What I'm taking away from from what other organizers are sharing about their experiences and recommendations they can make I really see how a lot of the tools they're implementing can apply on tribal lands um, especially in grassroots communities because I, people are creative in the way that they operate their organizations and yet still maintain the integrity of the movement and the principles and the value of community uh, involvement and especially advocacy and I think a lot of the tools here are refined to a point that organizations are able to remain successful in it and I as a young person I certainly hope to embrace what I've taken here and put it in real world um, practice. But just the workshop that you know we walked out of right now and talking about just media advocacy and how are we sharing our story our narrative so that folks are able to hear it and it coming from us people that are like on the ground doing the work is super important and valuable. Solution. Anybody have thought of a murky? For us to be able to be the ones that are delivering the message and really getting it across to folks in a way to understand it is important. And I think it helps with furthering uh, the work that we're doing. So we did talk a, a lot about framing and how to um, really lift up not just the problem, but also the solution and how that is tailored to who our specific target is, who, who's the audience. Uh, but then also going a step further, uh, thinking about how to sort of target that, that audience using different media. Well, through these learning circles, I've become aware of so much work that is being done around utilities um, all across the nation. And just having that collaborative learning space where I'm uh, learning of shared experiences, I'm being inspired by the successes of other organizations, I'm being motivated to potentially collaborate with organizations to help them overcome any challenges and barriers. For me, I take all of this back. I take this energy back to one voice. Everybody's so willing to help each other. Staff, the people like me that come here, uh, the information that, that they give out, you know, and I've been to many of these, but um, this is the most informative that I've been to. So I really enjoy coming to these. When you're under suspicion of being corrupt or something, and that logic is like These gatherings that we do on a national basis to see what other kinds of best practices there are and how it is that really folks got through to be able to do something that's never been done before in their area, we want to be able to apply that in Miami. I think that there's nothing more powerful than to unite various communities, various diasporas, I believe that it's transformative in creating these learning circles that create a safe space and a safe environment for us to voice and to channel out everything that we want to see move forward in, ter in terms of social change. Uh, there isn't enough safe spaces like this to let your creativity, your knowledge, your wisdom to really flourish and to connect with other individuals who have commonalities or even different visions. And so with that, you expand your consciousness, you're able to bring back a whole different model of strategies to work on empowering and co-empowering with communities. When you connect with other people, you really get the landscape of what's happening around you, and especially in a movement like education justice or economic justice or utilities justice, you really see what other folks are doing, and that's where I find the value. I've never come across such a collective um, group of organizers who offer uh, 
unique experiences in light of some of the social movements that are going on now and how um, their work is being endorsed, it's being recognized. Um, there's a lot of visionaries that I see and people are very passionate about the movement and um, not only are they just participating in it, but they're actually living out the experiences. They're finding ways to, to increase advocacy and it's moving at a rate so much faster than I ever expected. And that's, that's inspiring, it's empowering because it helps us um, in my community to see how we can sort of expand our capacity and, and increase the knowledge base. Praxis is just innovative. I'm just really impressed by um, the amount of direction that they have and they're, they're open to listening to other um, organizations and communication is there and I, I feel empowered every time I leave uh, one of their meetings and even just talking to the organizers I think that they're doing amazing things and I just hope that we can uh, continue building upon that.